Today in the shop, we have a 2014 Jetta Sport Wagon that the customer's complaining it sounds like there's a helicopter behind the dash. Okay, that's not exactly what he said, but that's basically what it boils down to. After some quick poking around, found that the noise was directly related to the speed of the blower motor. So odds are we have maybe not a bad blower motor, but one that's failing. So in this video, we're gonna be replacing the blower motor and doing some inspections to make sure that we don't just have some junk shoved up in the blade. Now, this is not the only way a blower motor can fail. So after we replace it, we'll talk about some other things that you might wanna look for if you're having blower motor issues. Like with most Volkswagen and Audis, the blower motor is located on the passenger side, just behind the glove box. Now, this one's pretty easy. Down here on the passenger side, we're gonna have this cover. Some are foam and some are kind of this fabric thing. There's two fasteners that need to twist out, one here and one here. I usually just take a flat blade screwdriver and remove those. That's what these little guys look like. This is basically the same way we get to our pollen filter to replace it. We're gonna get this cover completely out of the way. That will expose our blower motor right here. And this is where our pollen filter lives right back here. Now that we have this cover off, we're gonna take some bolts out for our glove box to loosen it and get a little more room. Then we're gonna open the glove box. And of course this customer has a ton of stuff up in his glove box. And we're gonna do three screws at the very top. So one, two, and three. Next up, I wanna remove this lower A-pillar trim. I'm gonna pull up a little bit on the door sill trim right here because this door sill trim lays on top of the lower kick panel. We don't need to take this all the way out, just a little bit. Then we can get our trim tool and remove this panel. Now that's out of the way. We got enough room to drop our glove box down. If you follow the repair manual, you'll have to take all this stuff out over here. But what I've found is if you just loosen it, this really does give you more than enough room to get your blower motor out without having to take a bunch of center console stuff apart. Now there's one other part we gotta get out of the way before we get our blower motor out. You can see there's our blower motor right there. There's this ducting for the passenger side footwell right here that we need to remove. It's held in with one screw. If we come in through the side of our glove box here, you can see that one screw right there. That's what we need to remove next. It's a T20 Torx. So what I usually do is I'll reach my hand through here with a bit driver and remove it. Now that you got that screw out of the way, this piece generally just falls out of the way. Now we have easy access to our blower motor. First thing we're gonna do is unplug it. You'll notice this piece right here. This is our series resistor, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Once you have it unplugged, there's a tab right here that you have to pull down. Some of them will also have a screw, but this one's just held in with this tab. So if we pull that tab down, twist it clockwise, oh, there we go. And after a little bit of twisting, about an eighth of a turn, should be able to wiggle the motor out. And hopefully no critters or creatures come out with it. Well, I'm actually not sure we have a bad blower motor. Turns out uh, there was a business card, funny enough for frost heater, ironic. Uh, this may be the source of our issue all along. This not only will create some disturbance in airflow, but can actually cause this to be out of balance. If you'll notice, there's little weights, little clips that act as balancing weights on the blower motor. So really, I think what we should probably do, I think we should probably put this back in and see if our noise went away, and whether we actually need to replace the motor because it was out of balance or out of whack, or if it's just this business card that all we needed to do was perform a business card removal service. And we'll talk about in a minute how that actually got in there and what you can do to prevent that kind of thing. So I'm gonna put it back in and see what it sounds like. Since we're just testing it, I'm just gonna hold it in place here. Uh, steering wheel. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Okay, well, the good part is we didn't have a bad blower motor. We just had some yuck inside of it. So I'm gonna wrap up reinstalling this, put our glove box back together, and then we'll talk about how to avoid this problem. Also, if you do this and you end up not needing a blower motor, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and clean that out because these motors get pretty dusty. Once you get it in and mostly seated, go ahead and twist it into place, give it a wiggle, make sure it's locked in, and of course, plug it in. Then I'll probably reach over and give it a, one more test. Seems to be good, also I left the key on. Now I mentioned earlier about a series resistor, which is this piece right here. This is what helps control your fan speed. So if you have a blower motor that's only working on fan speed four, high speed, odds are this guy is what the problem is. Depending on what speed you select, power is sent through either one, two, or three resistors in series, and that slows the motor down. Typically inside, one of the resistors will fail, causing the fan only to work on high speed because it bypasses all the resistors. As you can see, this is a pretty big heat sink here, so it does build up a pretty good amount of heat. There we go, there we go. Now we'll go ahead and put our footwell duct back in. And you're probably thinking, Charles, I, I bought the motor. Isn't it a good idea to just go ahead and replace it? I mean, I already spent the money. Uh, yeah, I, I get that, and I wouldn't blame you if you're like, forget it, I'm just going to go ahead and put the motor in anyway. However, this is a couple hundred bucks. So if it's a couple hundred bucks that you can postpone spending, I don't see that as a bad thing at all. So I'm not going to replace this motor. Sorry, Eli. <laughs> but it's now that we know how to do it, it's a pretty easy, straightforward job. Now that we have our motor back in and our ducting on, we need to put our glove box back up into place. For that, we just kind of wiggle it back up into place. This tab right here may have to spread out a little bit in order to hook it around this side of the dash. There's also two alignment tabs behind this trim piece that have to go into these holes in the main dashboard piece itself. So just kind of wiggle it into place. Then it should kind of hold without any screws in it. Then we can go ahead and put our six T20s back in, three on the bottom on the outside, glove box closed. Then three up on the top, glove box open. Close your glove box. Then we can go ahead and put our lower A pillar trim panel back on. Maybe, what is that? So this is the clip that holds this lower A pillar trim on. That's not how you install it at all. <laughs> you need to make sure that that's in place. This is really one of the main clips that holds it in. Sometimes this gets left in the body of the car, so you need to make sure you get that out. Otherwise, your panel won't sit properly. It'll probably go in okay, but it won't be held in properly. There we go. Make sure that it's in the seal here. Snap our sill trim in. Make sure that's on. I did take this side glove box piece off. Ta-da! Now all we have left is to put this guy back on. There. Get your two little twisty guys in. Okay, so I feel like we dodged a 200 something dollar bullet by not having to replace that motor, just digging that business card out of it. But how do we prevent this from happening in the first place? Well, that card was actually in the glove box at some point. And my guess is what happened is because that glove box is so full, glove box got opened, glove box then got closed and that card got pushed up and out of the glove box and the recirc was probably on so it fell in and then got sucked up into the motor also another thing we can do to prevent debris from getting in our hvac system is keep your cowl cleaned off don't let leaves and pine straw and all that kind of stuff build up on the cowl because that can get pulled into that heater box as well. Now, blower motor failure on these is actually somewhat common and it's kind of a toss up between the blower motor itself actually going bad, 
having noise like we heard today, or just completely being dead, or series resistor failure. Series resistor failure usually shows itself by the blower motor only working on setting number four. Now, there are some of the newer ones that don't use a series resistor, so the diagnostic process is a bit different. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. A little bit of a weird turn this video took by not having to replace that motor, but I'm not terribly upset about it. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.